your journey can only begin when the self-doubts stop. The first step is harnessing your bravery within. Believing in you is your host, John D. Wallace. Good day to you all. My name is Sean, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another weight loss episode of Bravery Within. Thanks so much for tuning in. You guys are amazing. I can't thank you enough there for taking an hour out of your day there to listen to my episodes, and hopefully <laughs> you're getting some good out of them. It seems like it. I've been hearing back from you guys, and uh, not only am I getting suggestions on uh, episodes and stuff there, but you guys have been fantastic about the dad jokes of the day, which, of course, you know this one's going to end with one. You know I'm not going to let you get away with them <laughs> but um as i was going through a, as you all know i'm in month 22 of my weight loss journey and i i last year i'll be honest I, I i couldn't figure out i thought maybe it was because you know my body was done detoxifying and i was starting to get on a pretty good clip about losing weight and stuff uh and when i hit uh this time of year which you know when this is being recorded it's in october um, and, and it's kind of like, okay, I, I just wanted to see, maybe I was having problems last year getting through. So what I did is I, I dove in and I did some research. So episode 33 is, is very simply called the fall and winter months. And the reason I started off saying what I was, you know, about saying I was having troubles was because when I got to this time last year, I honestly, I didn't know, because I mean, I don't know if you guys have problems with it or not, but I do. When I get to this time of year, it, it seems like all I want to do is eat. And that's all I can get off, you know, I can't get it out of my head. It's like, instead of that little voice that's in the back saying, rah, 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 have some brownies, or rah, 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 have that lemon meringue pie. The problem is, now it's sitting in rah, 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 just eat, 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 eat. And that's all it says. And I can't get it to quit doing that. And, and I was getting really, really frustrated with it. It was like, okay, well, now I know this year, it's not, it's not due to the, you know, the pains of going through the learning, finding, a, listening to my body, saying, okay, this is what I need, this is what I don't need, uh, all, all of this other, you know, detoxification and getting my mind in the right spot and forgiving a bunch of people, and, and, and I mean, there were so many changes that I was doing last year. And I didn't know if, because I was always constantly hungry, if it was the shift in me, just my life. I mean, I uprooted everything. I changed everything about my life uh, when I started my weight loss journey 22 months ago. And, and I wasn't sure last year if the reason why I was constantly hungry was because my body was going through changes and it was just saying, no, you need to eat because I was, you know, I mean, I'm still restrictive with how much I, how much I eat, my intake and everything else. I'm very careful with that yet because I haven't come this far to get derailed. But I have to be honest, every time I turn around, I'm, I'm hungry this time of year. And I thought there has to be a reason. Okay. I went through last year. I made it through. Uh, it was tough, no doubt about it, but I just attributed it to the changes of my weight loss journey and my body going through the motions of, of getting the excess fat off my body. But this year, I ran into it about the same time, and I thought, okay, so obviously it's not due to anything I did last year. It's not due to my weight loss journey. It's not due to my, you know, my restricted, you know, caloric intake, you know, sodium intake, sugar intake, all of that stuff. I said, there has to be something else behind it. And it was driving me nuts. So what does anybody do? You go to Google. <laughs> and I started looking. I started going to some medical sites and I tried figuring out why, why am I constantly hungry? I mean, I, I, there's, there's mornings that I'll eat five eggs and I'll have like three cheesy brats. I'll have some hash browns just to get some, you know, cause mainly I eat this way on the weekends. You know, we make up breakfast and stuff there. Um, so I'll make up, you know, have some hash browns cause I don't typically have lunch. I have breakfast and supper is all I have on the weekends. So I need a little bit of carbs to get going. So I'll have a little bit of carbs there and or sausage or bacon, one of those, just some sort of protein. And I, I'm just loaded up on the protein because I thought I'm getting tired of going. I can eat like this and normally I can go four or five hours and I won't have any problems. 
it seems like this time of year right now, I can have all of that stuff. I can have all the eggs, the sausage, the bacon, the hash browns, you know, and, and on the rare occasion, I'll have a piece of French toast, which I can't have much of it because it's, you know, it's, it's, there's not much good in it, let's be honest, but it helps the soul out and helps keep you going because the craving is there. So I have all of this protein that, that I'm dumping into my system and two hours later, I'm starving. And it's like, what is going on? I am completely dumbfounded here. There, there has to be a reason. Because, what, I mean, let, let's be honest. We, when you get to this time of year, we all love our fuzzy you know, socks. And we've got, the, got our big fuzzy hoodies and blankets and everything else. You just want to stay inside on the couch, watch TV all day. Because, yes, it does get cooler. Uh, there's snow outside. There's ice outside. You know, I, I mean, I understand that. Fall turns into winter. and it, it, The days get shorter which makes that even harder for everybody because there's less sunlight. Um, and then you got the cold, you got the wind, you got the ice, you got and everybody's out there is probably listening to this now is now freezing and turning the heat on in their car. <laughs> and I don't mean to do that. But for somebody like me, I fall and winter are my two favorite times of the year. I absolutely love the cold because I run hot so much. I mean, I literally run where I'll turn my face just turns bright red, my ears turn bright red because um, one, it's the pain that I'm in just because of, of the reconstructed back surgery and everything. But another one is I just run naturally just so much hotter. And, I, and don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, <laughs> don't get me wrong here. There is nothing more than I like sitting in my chair in the house under a blanket, which is rare for me to have a blanket on. But there's just certain times that when it's, you know, 20 below zero outside and, you, you know, and the wind is blowing, I like putting a blanket on me. And I like sitting there reading my magazine with a cup of hot chocolate and cinnamon rolls that I made. I mean, let's be honest, that sounds fantastic. It sounds like perfect winter food, which is also known as comfort food. Because normally that's you, you want those things because there's a lot of psychological reasonings for going through fall and winter and we're going to cover those because that's what I found. I, I, I was hoping there was a scientific reason for me constantly being hungry and I don't know if you guys get to be the same way. I'm guessing you do because the research that I did to try to find out why I'm constantly hungry and that voice in the back of my head is driving me insane is um, it's basically old school programming that is still in our DNA is really when you break it down. Um, now I still, I still stick to my weight loss journey. Don't get me wrong here. You know, I, I haven't given up on anything, you know, at nights and stuff there, I still have chicken or pork or hamburger or something like that. They're just, you know, my cheesy brats. I mean, if the cheesy brats industry ever goes under, I'm toast. <laughs> there goes my whole journey. I am so finished. I probably eat four dozen <laughs> cheesy brats a week i don't know i don't have any i eat a ton of them everybody that knows me knows that basically you you know there's there's me i love my mountain dew and i love my cheesy brats that's pretty much all there is to making me up anymore um but i i know that th there has to be a reason why and it, it took me a little bit to figure this one out and i was hoping there was a good reason because i thought if you're going through the same thing that I'm going through, because I'm, I'm going to be honest, while I'm doing this podcast right now, it's about quarter after four in the afternoon. I just got done with work and I'm sitting here and I am starving. I mean, my if I was to put the microphone that's over my head right now and put it down by my tummy, it would sound like a tornado siren going off. <laughs> it's just it's just really, really hungry. And I, and I had, you know, I had steak and rice for lunch today. Um, I had my cheesy brats for breakfast this morning, and I didn't really eat a whole lot else. So, yes, I'm running low. I'm not going to argue with that one. But it's still the point of... It's like, oh, it, it's driving me nuts. It's like every time I turn around, my tummy's growling. I can go through spring and summer and, and be just fine. I, I don't have these problems. It, it was, it, and I honestly thought being last year, you know, as I was starting out on my weight loss journey, I really thought it had something to do with the journey itself. But I come to look and after doing research, it, ha it had nothing to do with my weight loss journey. It all has to do with basic old school programming that is still in our heads to basically, we go into survival mode when we, get, when we hit fall and winter months. And, and, and let me start explaining why a little bit here. Um, back in the old days, long before we had these wonderful homes that have great insulation, good windows, excellent heating, they're climate controlled on the inside, you know, you have heat or you have air conditioning, you know, whatever it is. A lot of the pioneers, 
pretty much all of them. And anybody coming up around that time and before, they didn't have good housing. They didn't have, you know, a, a safe place to do. I mean, they had the log homes, but there was no insulation. So whatever whatever the, the logs provided, you know, protection against, that's all you had. That's why so many of them there had the wood burning stove going 24 seven. It was the only way to stay ahead of the cold. And our bodies are naturally designed um, to store up for the winter because when you got through your your fall you know your fall <laughs> all your bringing in all the food and everything else um and you seen what bounty you basically had after growing your groceries outside in your gardens all summer long whatever you had there and whatever you could kill and take care and process that's what you had to go on and if you didn't have enough your body was saying okay well now during this time when you got into fall what it did is it made you naturally hungry so you would put weight on because back in the old days before we had these wonderful homes that we live in now they didn't have this kind of technology and they didn't have this kind of protection so their bodies basically wanted them to store up fat and calories to help get through the winters because winters were exceptionally harder back then um, to get through let's just be honest there and stuff they're living in a log home out in the middle of the prairie with no trees or no nothing around you and there's no running water and no electricity no internet no cable oh my goodness sakes I'm in trouble and we all know they didn't have Mountain Dew back then so you know I'd have been I'd have been finished at that point but what it does is it's it's a survival impulse is what it is and your body is saying okay what we need to do is we need to start storing because we know winter is tough it's the toughest time of year to try to get through so we need to put on some extra weight we need to put on extra fat we need to store some extra calories and that basically would help pull because sometimes the bounty that you would get from everything you grew in your garden throughout the summer may not pull you through for the whole winter uh, I mean winter is a long time let's be honest I mean you're looking at four months you know of, of cold if you got lucky it was shorter than that you know if you had a really good fall you know I mean each season's three months roughly but let's be honest the the winter seems to run a lot longer your days are a lot shorter there's a lot more darkness and people have a tendency to stay inside a lot more during that time so you basically your body is just saying okay we're, we need to go for all intents and purposes we need to go in survival mode because winter is the toughest time to get through um, and once once you started to build up that stuff because by the time you get to you know you're approaching spring you know you've already been through three months of snow and cold and ice and you know just trying to survive so our bodies got used to being in that kind of rhythm and it would store extra you know extra calorie and stuff there so I mean there's there's a lot of reasons why not just for survival there was a, there's other reasons why your body did that and that's why you know and I'll explain that as, as we go through here but but the the biggest thing that I could find the reason why our bodies do that and like I said it's old world programming is still in our brains is survival your body goes into survival mode to get through the long winter months now even though we have these nice places we live in your body is still attached to the earth i mean it's still attached to you know the pressure changes you know all the fronts that go through i mean we're still connected in in many ways so your body just is just used to i mean for lack of better words i suppose your biological clock kicks in and say okay well we've been it's been a year okay now we need to do this all over again so we can make it through another tough time so that is one of the biggest reasons that I could find, and it made sense to me of why I'm constantly hungry. Now, no matter how much protein I've eaten at this point, like what I went through last year, it was difficult. I mean, it was so difficult to try to hold to my 1,700 calories a day. And a lot of times I ended up going over by a couple 300 as much as I didn't want to, but my stomach was constantly, constantly growling. So I made sure that I had the meat sticks available. I had make sure that I had devil on your uh, hard boiled eggs and cheeses and anything there what I what I tried to do and I learned from last year is to front load on the protein have a bunch ready to go just like this upcoming weekend we're going to be going to the grocery store and stocking up the freezer for lots of meats and you know cheeses and and all that stuff there it'll all go into the freezer to get ready to go for winter so we 
we know that we'll be able to make it through. Now, granted, are the grocery stores always open? Of course they are. We don't have to worry about them. Uh, but I still like having one thing that in the area that I live in, a blizzard can happen with almost no warning. And when we get them, we get them. We get snowed in for a couple days typically. And it shuts town down, shuts everything down. So what we've done is we've learned to store food up in a pantry so you, that way you don't ever have to worry about running out we always plan ahead i watch for specials in the grocery store and when you know they have you know different noodles which i know is not good for the weight loss journey but it's very easy to cook because there's many times we'll lose power we'll lose water we'll you know we'll lose all that stuff so it makes it just that much more difficult and when the wind is blowing 60 mile an hour outside and we've got a foot of snow on the ground it makes it almost impossible to use the griddle or the grill that's outside so if we don't have power inside luckily we have a gas stove so we can still make some food and hence the noodles something easy and quick to be able to make you know we'll have extra fish in the house and stuff that we can throw in the oven and, and, and get it going but you learn when you live in the middle of podunk like where we are you learn to plan ahead because when when bad weather sinks in it sinks in and it shuts town down that's just all there's to it uh four-wheel drive vehicles like i have a four-wheel drive pickup there are times that sometimes i have a hard time making it home even in four-wheel drive and and my truck is a darn good truck so i mean there's a lot of people that drive cars around and they end up getting stuck so you just learn to plan ahead so all of that goes into basically your survival mode which basically your body's going, oh, well, guess what? We can't run lean like what we do during the spring and summer months. We have to step up our game. We need to, you know, put on that extra fat. We need to put on those extra calories, which is <laughs> exactly opposite of what you're trying to do when you're on a weight loss journey. So I I'm hoping to get through this one here, but if worse comes worse, I always try to keep a bunch of protein ready to go. And we're trying some new, some new recipes as we're going along. Um, and I've got some neat uh, ways of supplementing the comfort foods we all absolutely love during the holidays and during the during the winter months. Because uh, we all fall back on comfort food because a lot of it is really, really heavy in calories or fat or, you know, they're just, it's just basically, let, let's be honest, when the sun comes up and it doesn't come up till 7.30 in the morning and by 4.30 it's dark outside that really plays havoc with a bunch of you know with everybody's minds with their you know their moods i mean they have a lot of mood swings they you know it's really really hard on them to get through the winter a lot of people are really really depressed during that time me i love it it's my favorite time of year i'm depressed during the summer when everybody else is happy because <laughs> i hate heat and i hate summer but winter i love because it's cold and for me it's easier for me to put a coat on or put a blanket over me and try to warm up than it is to try to cool off. So during those times, during the summer and springtime, you don't really feel like eating because it's warm and you just, bleh, you just don't want to. So getting through your weight loss journey for at least six months out of the year is a piece of cake. But it's the other six months that is like, okay. And I, like I said, I honestly thought it had to do with everything changing uh, with my weight loss journey last year. Now, I've always felt every fall that I needed to eat more. I get I get kind of panicky and where I got to put extra food in the house. There may be tons of food anyway, but I still have to go out and buy more because I just get panicky about, you know, if we get snowed in or are we going to have enough to winter, you know, make it through winter. Um, and I know that sounds funny, but when you have a family, you just have to plan ahead all the time and make sure you got the bases covered. So cold weather, basically, it, it fires up your, your survival instincts is, is what it does. And that's why you always have that nagging in the back of your head for the next few months saying you need to eat more. But another reason besides just keeping the basics alive, keeping your, you know, keeping all your body functions and everything, your heart, your lungs, your brain and everything else going, um, Eating actually will, will keep you warmer uh, is one thing that I thought about too. And as even though you're gonna, cons you, you're gonna eat more, but you also consume more. It doesn't mean that you should go out and eat an extra thousand calories a day by any means, because you don't burn that much, but you do burn more calories trying to stay warm. Because most people that aren't like me hate the cold. And when they do, they're bundling up a lot a lot heavier. Me, it's 10 degrees outside. I'm still outside in shorts and flip-flops out on the deck. Everybody looks at me like, what is wrong with you, Sean? Have you flipped out? Well, kind of, sort of. You know, that's why I said I like the cold. Um, but most people don't. And eating, you know, those comfort foods will actually help you uh, warm up. And yes, you do burn more calories because your body has to work harder 
to stay warmer. And that's why you always have that urge of having the, the really, really fatty foods or the, you know, the really, really sugary foods all the time because you need that intake there to basically kick up your blood sugar. So what that does is fires up your heater and keeps you warm. But you have to be really, really careful because when you're on a weight loss journey like me, that's not an option. That's the bad part is, is even though, I, I mean, I miss making my orange orange sweet rolls in the morning on the weekends and stuff where you would have those comfort foods or the cinnamon rolls. Or, you know, I would end up having, you know, eight pieces of French toast and some and some sausage. All of that stuff is just all comfort food. And, and hopefully when I, when I reach the finish line, with my own weight loss journey, I'll be able to start introducing more of those back in where, you know, as long as I maintain and not gain, but I'll have to figure that out when I get there. I've never been, I haven't been skinny since I was 14. So it's been a long time and I'm 49. So let me tell you, that's a lot of years. <laughs> um, but eating does, you know, help keep you warmer. So you are going to burn more calories uh, that way. Another thing, and this is another one I really wanted to cover because I, I want to make sure my family, you guys are my extended family out there, and I want to make sure you're okay. But winter has a tendency to add in depression. And what they did, and what I was doing some research and, and looked at, and they call uh, between, you know, the more time that you spend indoors, let's be honest, you're, you're inside more, you're not outside, you know, at the lake or, or hiking or going to the park or whatever, you're actually, you're indoors because it's cold. And then the shorter days, like I've been talking about, all plays havoc with your, with your mind. And that has a tendency to make you more depressed. You know, part of it is because you suffer from a vitamin D deficiency. Uh, and we only get that, you know, of course you can take pills for that, but a lot of it comes from sunlight. And that sunlight is extremely limited during the winter. So you have to be real careful. So, and the reason I'm saying all this is, is because they, those two reasons are basically linked to what they call SAD, seasonal affective disorder. And basically what that does, it's a form of depression that's associated with the shorter days of winter. And it brings, uh, you know, the darkness and everything else really has a tendency to bring people down. So if you're, you know, you have to be really, really careful, you know, so you, I mean, I know it sounds funny, but it's sad. Seasonal affective disorder. If you're running into that and you're really, really super depressed, I'm asking you to talk to somebody and get some help. Sometimes that's the only option, but you can go outside like during the day and get some sunlight that will help people out there. Sometimes just sitting outside and just letting the sun hit you. It may be cold outside, but the sun, if you get out of the wind and sit in the sun, a lot of times it'll warm you up and it'll just help your mood. You'll, you'll feel a lot better. Another thing, you know, and I already kind of already covered this, but I, I, I want to go over it again, just to make sure. But our, I mean, it, let's, let's be honest, Christmas, Thanksgiving, all the winter holidays are all basically traditions in eating lots and lots of basically fat food. I mean, it, it's all, you know, it's all called comfort food. They're very, very rich food is what it is. I mean, they're, they're loaded in, in carbs, they're loaded in sugar, they're loaded in salt, but that's, we've always had those and they're, they're, they're ingrained into us. Just like, like I told you about the old world programming in our heads, they're saying you need to go into survival mode to eat, eat, eat. Well, this is the same thing. Um, we, we we automatically crave more of those comfort foods because yes, it does keep us warm and it helps our moods out. Let's be honest. I mean, I mean, uh, to me, when I sit down and and I haven't had these since I started my weight loss journey, but I remember when I would sit down and I'd have cinnamon rolls for breakfast or French toast or pancakes or waffles or something like that. You would have the comfort foods. You, you automatically felt better. But the problem is you can't have those or you have to be extremely limited on having those when you're on your weight loss journey. And that, and that can play havoc with your mindset again. And that's why I said I wanted to cover the SAD, the Seasonal Affective Disorder. And I wanted to make sure that you guys got that, you know, pretty much ingrained into your head. Um, and because it'll pull away. I mean, the rich foods will basically kick in what's called serotonin. And serotonin is a neurotransmitter linked to feelings of pleasure and well-being. Um, you can get it from being outside, getting your vitamin D, or you can get it from eating the comfort foods that we all know and love. Let's be honest, we all love our stuffing and our mashed potatoes and gravy and 
uh, rolls and you know any any of that stuff there for Thanksgiving and for Christmas we all love it and because it helps us with our moods I mean for me I'm happiest during the winter months everybody else is kind of walking around dopey and, and mopey and you know they're just they're just feeling it. and that's fine that's what I think that's what you're supposed to be because I think I'm wired backwards <laughs> I'll be honest I, I really do I think I'm wired backwards but what what I've learned is is for me then that's what I do is I try to make sure I have like extra jokes in my back pocket. I try to have a few more smiles on my face, uh, trying to share them with others and stuff, and check on people a little bit more. Because when you go through the fall and winter months, it is hard on everybody else. So I try to be there a little bit better for them. But we all know, like I talked about in my my other podcasts, you know, here comes the holidays. We all know that at Christmas and Thanksgiving and even Halloween, because Halloween has a bunch of candy and stuff there, it's on its way. Here it comes. I mean, we have to be ready for it. So by prepping ahead of time and front loading on protein, it does help. But it's still, do, do I still want that turkey and mashed potatoes and stuffing and gravy and crescent rolls and oh absolutely I want all of that stuff I mean just because I'm on a weight loss journey doesn't mean that I still don't crave it I just have to be smarter about it and when we get towards the end of the episode here I've got a couple ways of trying to make those a little bit healthier because I, 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 I want to try some of these I have tried a couple of them and, and it actually does make a difference and it does help so that way you can still get the comfort foods um, you get that feeling and to help you through but you're not trashing your whole weight loss journey. Uh, another reason uh, is we, we have a tendency to stay inside when the weather is bad. So what that does is that decreases our physical activity, let's be honest. You know, because most of the time you're gonna pop in a good movie or, or read a good book, or you know, like some of us there and stuff, we play cards. You know, so you're sitting around the table, you're not, you're not really, really active. So you have to, you, you know, if you're taking in these extra calories, okay well guess what there goes your weight loss journey you have to be really careful with that so i found you you have to basically be ready for it you have to do like extra planning and that's what i had to do and thanks to going through last year this is my second year going through the you know, going through fall and winter on my weight loss journey i'm a lot more prepared this time for what i'm up against and and how to get through it without chucking my whole weight loss journey out the window um, because let, let's be honest, I mean, it's easier to, you know, basically sit in front of the TV and watch some movies than it is to go down to the gym and work out. Or if you have a, a bike or something in the house, just when the weather is not good outside, you just have a tendency to just basically just bleh, you just kind of sit there and, and that's just normal. But, you know, keeping your activity going, that's key to helping your mind out, keeping the brain going and producing more serotonin so you feel better. So I, I wanted, I was, there's also some more reasons here that I found why you're so hungry in the winter. Um, and one of them, another one is hormone changes. Um, as the days get shorter and the nights get longer, your brain chemistry changes, which can turn basically, now you've got an imbalance in your brain there um, between your hormones and hunger because basically your hormones are kicking in and saying, hey, we're in survival mode and we're depressed, you need to eat. And it's like, uh-uh, no, I can't eat because then I start gaining weight again and then I can't get through the door. So it, it's, a, it's a fight that it, it'll, just, it'll just drive you, you know, <laughs> it'll just drive you crazy. Um, there is, another one is just, let's just flat out say it, boredom. There's no other way of, around it. Um, dreary days, cold days and stuff there, most people don't like them. So they get real, real bored. You're stuck inside. You're not, you know, you don't really can't go outside. You can't like work in the yard or mow the yard or, you know, uh, take care of the, the flower gardens. Or if you have just a regular vegetable garden, you're not out there uh, padinking around in there and stuff, taking care of things. You're basically stuck inside. So boredom will get to you. So then you have a tendency to want to eat because you got nothing else to do. Uh, so all of these things go into why that little voice in the back of your head is constantly saying hey guess what you know i'm hungry you need to feed me i'm i'm starving i'm i'm not going to be able to survive and get through the winter so these are the things that you need to do and i'm going to keep pushing until we get to spring and i feel better 
So um, I found a few tips to try to help you out and I came up with a few and then I found a few more um, online to try to help because this was also going to help me because like I said, I didn't understand why my body was constantly saying you need to eat, you need to eat, you need to eat. And it's like, no, stop it. You know, we, we're going, this is month 22. There's no reason for you to constantly be nagging me. But, but it, it still does. So I wanted to try to find some ways of basically staying a little bit healthier and some things that helped me that, you know, I did last year that helped me get through. Um, the first one uh, that I had uh, was I, I made better meat choices. So what I did is I started swapping out for like turkey and chicken instead of like the little bit heavier ones like you know you have your bacon your sausage and your hamburgers those can be heavier on fat so i tried to stay away from those a little bit more because your chicken and your turkeys has the tendency to be a lot lot leaner so you know they don't have as much you know bad fat in them um but chicken and turkey also have uh, lean protein zinc iron and b vitamins with a lot less fat that you're taking in um, ground turkey, a uh, ground turkey patty, which I come to find out, contains only 3% of the fat that you're supposed to take in in a day, when a beef burger is around 20% of that daily value. So by cutting back there, I mean, it still tastes good. I mean, I was real careful with it. And it's surprisingly, I mean, I honestly didn't think I'd like turkey bacon or just turkey, you know, ground up turkey that we put in hot dishes and stuff there. I didn't, honestly, I didn't think I was gonna, I love turkey, but the thought of it being ground up is like, nah, that isn't gonna work. It actually did, it actually really, really helped out. And, and remember, you can use your air fryer to cook them up, which makes it even ha you know healthier. Um, I'm still trying to figure that one out. I'm not real great at it, it's not my friend, um, but Alex has done a pretty good job with it, but I still can't get that air fryer figured out. Um, another one there is I swapped out basically uh, for, I got basically whole grains. Uh, you know, I try to stay away from the white grains, the rices and stuff there, you know, your white breads and everything else. I did my very, very best to try to stay away from those. And I did a pretty good job at it. I was actually really, really proud of myself. Anything that, you know, white flour, white bread, white rice, anything, you know, like that there, that has the tendency to, you know, not be quite as healthy for you. So I, I, I try to work in more whole grains into my diet and it, and it helped. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it, of course, it's not going to get you all the way through. But when you're having those cravings and you're having and you want that comfort food, if you can find ways of making the comfort food a little bit healthier, then it's a win win. It's, it's going to help you all the way across the board. Um, another thing that I, I started doing and I love them is more uh, fruits and not so big on vegetables. But working in more fruits and vegetables is a great way of doing it. I mean, I know it's not quite the same as comfort food, but you can mix, you know, take like the fruits and mix it into a yogurt, you know, make yourself kind of like a pudding, uh, just kind of a parfait, you know, anything like that there to kind of help with, you know, because that's got the sweetness to it. And I started doing that as well. And it kind of helps take that craving away of, oh, wow, all I want is like, you know, I don't know, 10 pounds of chocolate. <laughs> and we all know that ain't going to work. That's not good for you. So what I did is I started swapping out for more fruits. Of course, I don't eat vegetables. I, I'm very limited. The only thing I like vegetables in is like a good stew. I do love vegetables in that. I'll put in carrots, corn, peas, you know, celery, uh, you know, that stuff there to work it into because a good stew and a good soup during the winter months is great. And, and Alex went, and I went to work last year and we actually found some soups that were really, really low on calories and carbs but they maintain their flavor. It was amazing. We we had this chicken noodle soup one that I found uh, on a spot somewhere on in the internet there. And it was and I wish I could find it again. And I will work to try to dig it up because the people that come up with this winter, man, they just des they deserve kudos cuz they figured out something. It was like we ate I don't know how many kettles full of this stuff. Cuz during the winter months, soup is like the biggest thing. Soup and chili. I mean, everybody just goes crazy for that because it's really really good comfort food it's heavy and it it, it it basically fills you up but we were able to find where i i could make a bowl of that chicken noodle soup and it was only like 170 calories per bowl and i'm not talking just a little bit you have like three teaspoons and it's empty i'm talking a big bowl i mean i don't know how they did it but it was phenomenal and, and that helped pull me through when I, when i was having those those cravings um 
for all my comfort food because let's be honest with when you've worked all day and it's it's cold and you know you've had to scrape off your windows two or three times because of work uh, and you're driving home and it's icy and snowy and everything else the thing that you want is you want something super super warm to get into your bones to warm your body up and let's be honest soups do that so I um, I, I really started working those in a lot more uh, and I'm gonna try to find more soups this upcoming year uh, and hopefully try them out and if they work out what I want to do is I'll put them on the podcast or I'll put them on my Facebook page with the recipes and say hey this is where you need to go or maybe I can figure out how to put a link on there and then you guys can go and check it out yourself that way the people that make them they get full credit for it because it's not anything I did these brilliant people there found a way to make this stuff taste so good and yet keep the the carbs and the calories down it was amazing how they did it so I will do my very best to try to start working those into the Facebook page another thing that that helped out uh, was I know we can't have a lot of desserts when we're on our weight loss journey, and I don't. I, I do very good. But I have an apple cobbler that I make that is, is actually relatively low uh, in carbs and in calories because it's got oatmeal, it's got all kinds of stuff. It's really, really, really good. And, and that really, really helped. I mean, I can't eat a ton of it, but when you're, when you're really craving something, because you can make it with apples or cherries, or I have a wild mixed berry one that I'll put in once in a while too. And, and, and those ones there, they're the canned, you know, you can use your regular ones, but I typically use the canned fruits and stuff there, so they're loaded in sugar. So I have to be really, really careful wh when I'm having that. But it makes a, a huge difference because it's really, really warm. And everybody loves that when you walk into a house and you can smell something cooking. You get that cinnamon, you get that apple cinnamon that's that's going and stuff. And to help me, you know, get through it, sometimes I would just put a pot of boiling water and I'll put a cinnamon stick in it to basically yeah, it's cinnamon and cinnamon stick. So that way it'll just sit there and just softly stay warm. And then it puts that smell in the house and it helps. Um, to kind of help, I mean, yes, does it make me hungry? No arguments there. But what, what I can do is sometimes I can fool myself into thinking, okay, well, I'm having a banana, I smell this. So one of my senses is saying, ooh, this is comfort food, but yet I'm still not blowing everything out of the water and I'll have a banana or I'll have an orange or, or something like that. It does help, it doesn't work all the time. I'm not arguing, and I'm, like I said, I'm still learning myself, guys. I'm still trying to figure this out. I don't have all the answers. I'm not a smarty pants by any way shape or form I am still trying to figure this out as I go um, another one there uh, while trying to get through winter and stuff there those are some of the things I did uh, other things that I found is um, when you're stressed out or you're depressed or whatever there play with your puppy play with your cats um, anything like that they're having you know a fur baby around can help take away the blues though you know basically it's amazing well, as, as I'm literally as I'm talking to you right now Willow is laying on my foot right right under my desk. <laughs> so I mean they're they're great for comfort. They help pull you through. Um, go outside uh, during the daylight hours and stuff there, and just allow the the sun to hit your skin and everything else. That will help the serotonin, so you feel a little bit better. Um, just there, there's all kinds of different things that you can do. It, it's tough. I, I, I'm not arguing that point, but the cravings and trying to get through the winter and, and fall months it, it can be a little bit difficult uh, but trying to find comfort by not using food can be really really stressful but you know that's where you have your fur babies that'll help you out you know you can write uh, you can read I personally write as much as I possibly can um, there's all kinds of different things that you can do hang out with friends you know play cards you know there's all kinds of things to help you through it and sometimes if you keep your mind busy what that's going to also do is it, it should help you keep the cravings in check a little bit. Uh, I found that if my mind is on something else, like if I'm writing or if I'm working on my podcast here for you guys, or I'm hanging out with a friend and, and, and we're talking or whatever, I don't seem to think about food quite as much if you have somebody to talk to about all that. Um, it, it's not the best answer, but it's the best one that I've been able to find so far. And, and something I, I wanted to try to figure out, okay, is there a way because the next thing that I ran into is like there has to be a way to make like our so you can still have comfort foods but make them a little bit healthier because some of these there we've uh, Alex and I have already started doing and they work but what I did is I went to the American Diabetes Association website and, and, and they came up with strategies to make comfort food healthier so 
Well, their recommendation is that they have a few strategies in substituting ingredients, reducing the quantity of unhealthy ones, and changing the cooking technique. And, and Alex and I have done pretty good with that, trying to make things um, healthier so we can still do it. We're gonna try this weekend, and I don't, I don't know the whole recipe, but he stumbled across on some, <laughs> on some website, I guess it is, and we're gonna be trying to make healthy pizza pockets. Um, because I haven't been able to have those either because, you know, everything, you know, white breading and everything else, you got the red sauces in there that are, that are not good for you. So what I, I know he's got something up his sleeve for trying to figure out, okay, this is what we're going to do. So hopefully I will have some good news. If they turn out well, then maybe I can share that on the Facebook page too, to help you. Cause let's be honest, it's football season. And what do you do during football season? You have all kinds of munchies. <laughs> now I know not everybody gets into football. I understand that. And I'm sorry, ladies for saying that, but some of you don't, and that's fine. You, you have your own hobbies, but let's be honest, when I'm watching football, that's all I want is chips and dip and Mountain Dew and everything unhealthy. And it makes it very difficult to try to get through. So I went to the American Diabetes Association website and I found this, found it where they had went through and they started substituting um, some of the ingredients and stuff to make the comfort foods that we all love and want to eat healthier for you. So I'm just gonna start kind of reading this a little bit here because there's, there's quite a few things here instead of trying to, you know, switch it up or whatever i'm just gonna just tell you okay let's talk about soup there may be no food as comforting as thick creamy soups with their cream butter and cheeses ways to make soup healthier substitute olive oil for the butter when sauteing the ingredients and we haven't used butter in, in a long time we use olive oil for everything i'll be very honest with you we use it on the blackstone griddle we use it inside in the oven everything we use olive oil as much as we possibly can because it helps keep the fat down makes a big difference uh, use light whipping cream or milk to replace half and half that thickens the soup. We have done that. Uh, it, it does make a difference. And, and surprisingly, it, the, the uh, excuse me, the taste does not really change all that much, which actually really is really, really cool. I was worried about all these low calorie soups and stuff there that we're getting into. It's like, well, they're going to take all the all the flavor out of it. And they don't. They, they found other things to use to replace the flavor. And, and yeah, you have to buy a couple more things to, to you know that you're not used to buying. I have to admit, some of the stuff I had to go find, I'd never even heard of before. But it's in the stores. You just got to go get it, and it does make a difference. Um, if the recipe calls for cheese, choose a low-fat variety or simply reduce by a third or a quarter the amount that you were going to add. So if it calls for a cup of cheese only put two thirds or three quarters of a cup in it. And it, and we do, and cheese is my weakness. I'll be honest, I, I don't cut corners on cheese because uh, basically that's the only dairy that I get. So I add that to everything, but um, I know some of you out there and stuff aren't a big cheese holic like I am, <laughs> but that's another option that you can do. To thicken the soup without dairy, try these tricks. Ditch the half and half and make a corn stir, corn starch slurry, a mixture of corn starch and a liquid with water or both, or you can use broth. Using a ratio of half a table, tea, yeah, tablespoon of corn starch to a cup of liquid, and we have done this before, and it does work. It, I like using like a chicken broth for. I'll use that like in the chicken noodle soup, and it's a way to keep the calories down and way to add, bounce up the flavor. And wowzers, does that make a huge difference? It is awesome. It is so so good. Um, some people will use mix equal parts of soy milk and silk and tofu. Bonus, this adds more protein to the soup. It's another way of, of thickening it up. I haven't done that one. That I haven't. Dairy doesn't get along with me, and I haven't really messed around with silk and tofu. But I mean, I know there's some vegetarians that do, and and, and hopefully that helps. You know, with your with your soups. Um, another thing there, uh, they have in there: saute minced garlic, celery, and carrots until opaque, and then add whatever chopped veggies you want broccoli, cauliflower, or greens with herbs and spices and a couple of dried potatoes, uh, diced red potatoes and a sweet potato or a winter squash. And then toss that in with your chicken and vegetable broth and then just let that sit and in a way you'll make it a very, very good soup. Other comfort food twists, the, these are other things they come up with and I, I'm gonna try out a couple of these, these are pretty good. Uh, chili, instead of beef or pork, substitute with skinless chicken or, or turkey. I have tried that, that actually is actually really good. I was, I was shocked. Uh, beans fr from black to pinto or to kidney, um, work perfect here. The chopped vegetables like sweet peppers, mushrooms, fresh or canned tomatoes and carrots 
uh, serve other whole greens or, or a bowl of fresh greens, whatever, you know, basically to make the chili a little bit better. Risotto. Instead of rice, use hulled barley. I haven't messed with this one yet here. This will be a new one for me. Instead of butter, use olive oil, of course. For more flavor and nutrients, add mushroom, spinach, squash, fennel, and garlic and onions. Um, that's a nice way of doing up a nice risotto. Uh, that's one of the, I'm going to try that and I'll get back to you on that one there. Pasta, go for whole wheat pasta. Japanese shiitake noodles, which are very low in carbs, or spiralized zucchini. Um, I haven't got to try that one out there. The Japanese shiitake noodles, that's hopefully, uh, try that out. I gotta talk to my, my cook, Alex, and find out how we wanna do that one there. Burgers, lower, by, lower the amount of fat by combining half the amount of lean ground beef with cooked beans or lentils, or sub out the beef with ground chicken or turkey. Um, and, and we've done that before. We do a lot of chicken and turkey anymore as much as we can. We stay away from uh, the hamburger as much as we can. Uh, if we do, we try to get like the 90 or 95% fat free to try to keep the fat down as much as possible. But we, we have really switched over to pork, turkey, chicken, all those, all those lean uh, meats and stuff there makes a huge difference. So you still get flavor and they still taste good. And actually, I love them. I probably love a lot of our <laughs> a lot of our meals so much better because we have swapped that out. But I still have, you know, still have hamburger. But we we go through maybe a quarter of the hamburger that we used to anymore. Uh, it's been a big shift. I mean, yes, we have steaks, uh, and when we do that, we try to make sure whenever I have it, I make sure I cut out all the fat and stuff there to try to keep them as lean as possible. Mashed potatoes have the number of potatoes and mix with turnips, parsnips, celery root, or cauliflower. Or forgo potatoes and swap in cauliflower steamed with garlic cloves and chopped green onions. Blend with olive oil instead of butter, a little milk instead of cream or cream and cheese, and herbs and spices. Uh, we've been trying that. Uh, I don't actually don't eat really any potatoes. That's one lucky thing that the rare thing that I have is I might have some fries once in a while when we go out, but that's about it. But potatoes, I actually don't have any craving for. So to me, that that's fine there. But I do have a couple friends that have substitute mashed potatoes for the cauliflower, and they love it. They're covered in, with some cheese and some flavor, you know, some herbs and spices, and they absolutely love it. So I've tried it. Not a fan of it, uh, but I know there's a lot of people that. Um, do like it so you know hopefully it works out for you lasagna is like oh my goodness I had to read this one like three times <laughs> um, use whole grain lasagna noodles uh, part skim ricotta and mozzarella and lots of vegetables basically swap out the meat for the vegetables or switch the noodles with long thin slices of eggplant or zucchini baked and sauteed first I haven't done the second part there but we have used uh, whole grain lasagna noodles but I try to stay away from that because that has noodles in it and against that's carbs so I try to stay away from that but I, I gotta tell you lasagna is one of my favoriteest meals of all time and it's been really really hard but I know that I will be able to incorporate that back into my my diet at some point but right now while I'm on my weight loss journey just not gonna happen and the last thing that they they had here was meatloaf and oh man I love meatloaf use lean ground chicken or turkey instead of beef oatmeal instead of breadcrumbs and egg whites instead of the whole egg um, now we have I've, I've never made it with chicken or turkey and I gotta tell you I'm gonna try it this time and, and see how it turns out I use oatmeal all the time instead of breadcrumbs I, I, I and I, I've gotten away from breadcrumbs mainly I mean they're they're good but you're also talking about a lot of extra calories and a lot of extra carbs so I switched over to oatmeal quite a while ago and man actually it actually holds together better when it's in the pan and stuff there you actually get a better meatloaf I found it actually works better than the breadcrumbs it absorbs more of the fluids and everything else there and holds it together it actually does really good um, and then the eggs I, I would I personally would not substitute them it's up to you for egg whites instead of a whole egg mainly because that's protein and I eat tons and tons of eggs. Both Alex and I do. We go through so many eggs. It's like, oh my goodness sakes. So I won't substitute the egg whites out for it. But that is a nice option for making your meatloaf. Because when I make a meatloaf, I make it in a 13 by 9 pan. I make a lot of it. Because then what I can do is I can have that for my lunches when I go to work. And it's fast and easy to warm up while I'm at work. So hopefully some of those substitutions will help you with your comfort foods as you as you get through the fall and winter months like i said i'm going to try some of these out i found these and i thought oh man these are awesome we've already alex and i have already switched over quite a few of these and, and it does make a huge difference you'd be surprised how many just little things that when you change them 
they really add up to one big thing. And, and obviously it's working because like I said, I'm down over 220 pounds, you know, five pant sizes, three shirt sizes. That's worth an amazing amount. And honestly, like I've said many, many, many times before, I eat better and healthier now than I ever have. And I, and I, I there's no way that I'd go back to eating the way I was before. I, I would never give up the, what I'm doing now. And it, it's, it's better for you. It's healthier for you. Which is nice because I have to keep eating this way the rest of my life and I'm not having any problems with the way that we're eating. It's it's incredible. I thought I would when I started out on this weight loss journey. Not at all. It's actually been really, really good. The other thing to do to help you through because we all munch and you're going to munch more during the winter months is keep plenty of healthy snacks uh, available so that way you don't have the unhealthy ones in the house excuse me, you don't have them in the house. This will, you know, basically help you get through those cravings. That's why I have lots of cheese and meat sticks and, you know, I, and I know some of you guys will have celery, carrots, you know, all of that stuff there, anything, what, whatever it is to try to help you get through. And I know, you know, vegetables are not <laughs> comfort food. It's, it's hard to see them that way, but having the healthier snacks is going to help you get through because we all know we're gonna we're we're gonna munch that's just the way it is that's just that's just the season so hopefully something in this podcast here is going to help you i'm noticing here that i'm pretty well out of time so uh remember you got this uh if you find some recipes that you like they're low calorie low carb please share them on my facebook page i absolutely would love them i want to try them out and then report back to everybody say hey i got this one here from an amazing extended family member they said this is great we tried it out here and it is great you guys got to try this so if you get a chance put a recipe on my facebook page anybody can add to it which would be fantastic and let's talk about it let's see if we can help each other out get through the fall and winter months so remember you got this keep everything positive uh, if you get a free minute, please subscribe to my YouTube page. It's it's growing where people are finding it more and more. And remember, I wanted, I'm only doing this to help everybody that I absolutely can. I want to try to make things easier. And hopefully you can avoid some of the pitfalls that I went through while going through my journey and still learning. So hopefully there's something in here you like. Share, like, everything that you can, comment on the pages. So, okay, got all that one there. And you probably were thinking, oh, Sean forgot about the dad joke of the day. Well, guess what? Yeah, I didn't forget about it. (laughs) So if you're ready to go, here's the dad joke of the day. Do you know what the horse said after it tripped? Help, I've fallen and I can't giddy up. I like that one. That was fantastic. Thanks so much for joining in. Remember, you got this. Positive thoughts will help get you through the day. You guys are amazing. Thanks for listening. And as always, all my love and support, Sean.